Journalists are the people who tell us what's going on in our neighborhoods and communities and in other places around the world. They provide the latest breaking news and headlines, but they also give us other important information. Where do journalists get this news and information? A journalist gets information from what is called a source, which provides background, basically the facts and context for a story. A source can be a document, like a police report, the results of a scientific study, or sports statistics. A source can also be a person that the journalist interviews, like an eyewitness to a news event, or an expert in a specialized field like medicine, sports, or fashion. There are essentially three different types of journalistic storytelling, news, opinion, and features. And sources are required by all of them to provide the background and evidence to tell a complete story. News stories are considered to be informative or explanatory type storytelling. These types of stories present facts and figures in a clear and simple way so that you can quickly understand something that is happening in the world around you. I cover schools. I'm one of the education reporters here. I write news stories. It depends on the story, but usually I use three types of sources. I use the people who I'm writing about, the people I'm interviewing to tell the story. Um, I also use, I guess you'd call them legal sources, legal documents, you know, state law, school board policy, public contracts or briefs or memos, those sorts of things that help you get the background to do the story, and sometimes even historical documents, depending on what the story is. You have to have the sources to be able to understand what's happening in the schools and the documentation to back up and inform whatever you're writing about. Because I'm a courts and crime reporter, the most important thing for me is to know what are public records and how do I get them. You have to know who you go to and how you can get those documentation. I talk to police officers, I talk to prosecutors, I talk to people on the street, I talk to city officials. Um, you know, you need to know all of those people who are in the right places. Getting to know people in the communities that you're covering, getting sources, that's probably the most important thing too. We talk to a lot of people. When someone tells us something, it's our jobs to confirm it and do our separate research. So it's just being on the phone all the time to get the facts that we need. A lot of times we'll get a story and we won't necessarily understand it. So we'll go to an expert who can kind of break it down for us so we can break it down for our viewers. It's our jobs to have an understanding of what the experts tell us to make it a story that people will understand. But it's not our jobs to be experts. It's our jobs to seek out those experts to put a package together. Opinion in journalism occurs through the argumentative type of storytelling. It presents an opinion, or point of view based on research. Opinion is often wrapped up in controversy and conflict and is usually associated with political issues. But it can be used to explore any topic that people feel strongly about. This can take the form of an editorial, which is the opinion of a newspaper or other news outlet on a topic, a column, which is the opinion of an expert in the topic, or an entertainment review, which explains why a book movie, album, or a TV show is good or bad in the opinion of someone who specializes in entertainment reporting. Sometimes the opinion function of a news outlet is interactive and the general public is encouraged to weigh in with their own points of view on a topic. Although this type of community input isn't considered journalism, it can take the form of letters written to the editor, comments posted on the social media pages of news outlets, and people who call into radio shows or podcasts to talk about current events that are important to them. My job is to talk about things that matter to Cincinnati sports fans. You know, when I got into this, I used to think that, you know, you kind of just showed up before your show and talked. It doesn't work that way. You want to have opinions, but you want to have informed opinions. Joe Strauss, a columnist with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, joining us on ESPN 1530. It's always nice to talk to sources or, or people who are sort of on the inside who can give you the skinny on some things so that you can have an informed opinion. Stats is always used in sports. You want to have things that support your arguments, so those things are important. Getting background information is a big part of what we do. 
we're in the opinion business, so I have to come here at 3 o'clock and have a take on whatever's happening. Good, bad, yes, no, agree, disagree, I have to have an opinion. It would be irresponsible of me to just let an opinion fly and not have any background information on it. And so we spend a lot of time formulating arguments based on information. I'm in charge of the opinion pages for the Dayton Daily News and our three other newspapers. Um, I work with a small team to produce the pages that we call Ideas and Voices. We have guest columns, which are written by people who are authorities on whatever subject they're writing about, maybe an educator or a government person. We have letters to the editor, and then we do a lot of roundtable sessions where we invite experts from the local community in to talk about different issues. To do my job well and to be able to interact with the community the way I do, and and know what subjects to bring onto the editorial page. I need to know what's being said in the community about different issues, what those issues are, and who's talking about them in a way that matters. And I need to know what I think about those issues too. So I read a lot. That's true of journalists in general. We read constantly. We're always reading other newspapers, other websites, magazines, blogs, social media. You have to gather an enormous amount of information and intelligence just to figure out what is being said and thought out there so that I can bring it onto our page. Features are considered to be a type of non-fiction storytelling called narrative. Just like in the world of fictional literature, a non-fiction narrative has a beginning, middle, and end. The story is based on true, factual details about real people and real events but it also takes you beyond the basic facts to reveal a deeper truth about the subject. Typically, journalists use narrative when writing in-depth investigative pieces, travel and biographical stories, or when covering the details of a person, place, or event over a long period of time. Narrative allows the storyteller to use richer, more descriptive language and visuals than is normally found in the typical news or opinion piece. Mainly what I write would be um, editorial. But sometimes I, I do write news stories and sometimes I write feature stories. For new writers or our interns, we start them out more with feature stories because you don't have to have as many sources. If I'm doing a story about someone's business, I might just need to talk to that one person. But I do a lot of research to understand who they are, what it is they're doing, to understand their business. I ask a lot of questions. Who is this person? Why are they doing this? How do they get involved? What's their background? What are the challenges? What's great about what they're doing? I always tell our interns, never just walk in and not know anything. Even if you're just Googling somebody, you know, pick up their book, read something about them. Do the homework, do the background, know your facts, and then you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. Just like with any other kind of journalism, if you're covering science, you need to know who's the proper expert to explain the story and make sure you get it right. With some things like fashion, films, art coverage, certainly sports coverage, the reporter needs to have a pretty good working background on the topic that they can kind of draw on quickly. And that requires a lot of reading, a lot of gathering of information. For example, if you're going to write about movies, you need to know a lot about movies. Otherwise, it's going to be clear to the reader that you don't know what the heck you're talking about. So, no matter what type of storytelling is involved, a journalist must rely on sources to put a story together. It goes far beyond just doing a search for information on the internet. Why is that? Well, as you know, Abraham Lincoln had a very famous quote that you really can't always trust all the things that you read on the internet. So <laughs> Maybe that's all I need to say. Not everything on social media is true. Nothing, not even everything on the internet is true. I know that's shocking to believe for some, but definitely not. <laughs> Check your sources. You have to confirm everything you write about, and you have to, ideally you'd like to double and triple confirm it. You gotta have more than one source to, to write any kind of story, because those other sources will expose you to other angles that maybe you haven't considered. Even if you're writing a column, opinion piece, it's got to be based in fact. It's got to be confirmed. The three types of journalistic storytelling all require sources and research. Evidence that helps journalists to convey news and information to the public. Depending on what type of news they cover, journalists must actually track down and interview experts and eyewitnesses. 
and locate and read documents ranging from a criminal suspect's arrest report to the latest rule changes in a sport to help tell their stories well.